couple of things that I have jotted down here are um, just talk about the Christian church. Um, there, there are many denominations in the church, and the church is so broke up because uh, the denominations are based on disagreements over the interpretation of Scripture. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10 through 13, it says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no division among you, but that ye prove that but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. And then verse 13 says, Is Christ divided? And my just me, I, I'm, I'm saying I'm right, I'm not saying I'm wrong, but for to me. The, the many denominations, each denomination has its own set of rules, its own set of beliefs, and even some have what they call a government. And I, I truly do not believe that this is what Christ wanted us to do. This is not what God wanted us to do. And even with Paul and his teachings, the only thing Paul left us with, basically to sum it up, was we are to elect leaders in, in, within the, in, in the building. If we have a building that we're worshiping in, then he told us, he taught us in his teachings to appoint a pastor. There was prophets, there was apostles, there was teachers, and there was evangelists. And then, and then there were elders in the church. And we all know what elders are. And so elder is an older person. Elder is a more, a person that has knowledge. Somebody that's been appointed to be an elder, in my belief, should be someone that is full of knowledge. Not just somebody of, not just somebody that's a babe in Christ and then you're appointing them elder. No, it's not what elder means. And I, I, I've been doing some research on the different denominations. Uh, I, I can't even begin to name all of them. And each of them have their own set of rules, and some of them they you don't they don't want you to um, sing. They don't want you to play music. Some some denominations don't believe in prophecy. Some people don't believe in speaking in tongues. And it, it, this is what Satan wants. He wants the body of Christ so divided up that they don't even realize that the church is the one that's going to hell. The, the, the guy that when, when Jesus comes back, he's coming back to judge the church first, not the sinner, not not the people that's running around here sinning. He comes back to judge the church because we know better. And people, we have took the Bible and we have turned it into what we want to or we take different parts of the Bible and we use it to our own advantage. And, 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 that's, what, and that's the thing, like Paul asks, is Christ divided? Christ was not divided, therefore... He wanted us all to worship God and, and to honor him as a whole. He did not want us to be breaking stuff down and we going over here and say we believe this, this, uh, and then this group say we believe this, and then this group say, well, we don't believe what neither one of you are saying. And that's, that's out of order. And that's what Satan wants. He wants the church, you. The church is you. So many people hollering about the church, the build. Yeah, the church and the building is not the same thing. A building is just a temple, a, a, a mosaic, whatever you want to call it. It's just a building where we gather together to, to worship. And as in Hebrews 10 and 25, it says, And let us not neglect our meetings together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his returning is drawing near. And so many people, they get confused about, well, I don't have to go to church. I don't have to do this. I don't have to do that. I can just get mine at home. Yes, true enough. You might get yours at home. You might get yours off the TV ministry. And, 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 and you, you just might. Because even the church is within you, so you have to worship God and praise God even when you're not in the temple with other people. But as, as in Hebrews it says, let us not neglect our meetings together, meaning we are still have we are still to come together as a whole. If, if you're a mayor, if you're in a marriage, yes, that's coming together. If you belong to a group of people or there has been a ministry established in a building, yes, you gather together to praise and worship God. 
you gather together to be taught because you might not be able to hear from God versus somebody else that you've been through their ministry and they're teaching you because, like again, God has appointed evangelists, teachers, prophets, evangelists, and um, pastors. He that that is what that is why we should go there because sometimes we could be so bound and so caught up in sin that we can't we can't get our deliverance on our own. We we can't get that breakthrough we need. We might need somebody to pray with us. We might need somebody that God has given that power and that authority to to lay hands on us or to just be in their presence and for them to pray for us and help and help pull us out of whatever we're in or to break those chains of whatever we have had that has us bound. And 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 um as it did and then in Hebrews twenty six and twenty seven it says, Dear friends, if we deliberately continue sinning after we have received knowledge of the truth, there is no longer any sacrifice that will cover these sins. There is only the terrible expect expectation of God's judgment and the raging fire that will consume his enemies. And what that is saying is, when you know better, you do better. And that, that goes back to the church. And... Christianity, that's why so many people run from the Christian churches. They go and they go to these other religions. They want to, they're, they're saying they're Jehovah Witness. They're saying that they're um, Islam. Or um, they're saying that they're paganism. They're pagans. Why? Because the Christian church, the Christians have so screwed the Bible up and the word of God till... The, Nobody wants to fool with Christians because they say Christians are confused, that they, they, they're divided. And yes, the Christian the Christian church is divided. It's too many different denominations and too many rules to where you got one denomination over here looking upside the other one's head or this, 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 that. And God has appointed many leaders. And because of that organized religion, that organized man-made, man come up with all these silly rules about Oh, you can't preach. I mean, you can't prophesy in my church. Oh, you can't dance in my church. Oh, you can't sing in my church. Oh, you can't play instruments. Or oh, no, blah, 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 this. Or oh, we, we pray to this statue. Or oh, we don't pray to the statue. Or Jesus was not the son of God. He's a prophet. All this stuff is evolved around the Christian church. And what, as a people over the years, have, we have screwed the church up. And that's why people don't want to come. That's why people, it's so hard to get people to come to Christ because th they're so afraid of Christianity because Christianity has been taken and just turned into something else. And most of the churches, most of these people, they know better. The leaders, they know better. They hear from God. They know what God is saying to them, but you know what? You block them out. You block out, I mean, you block God out, what God is telling you. And you know better. And, and God, and it says right here that there will be no sacrifice. The sacrifice was Christ. You will, you're not going to be covered. It, uh, it makes me so sick that preachers and, and, and these preachers and teachers and people of the world, they want, they want, y'all want, stuff to be sugar coated. You want somebody to get some chocolate syrup and pour it on it. You want somebody to sprinkle sugar on it. You want your little flowers on the side of it. But if you don't want to adhere to the actual truth. You want you're so quick to say somebody's judging me or you're judging me or, or you're against me or you're against this. And and, and the thing is it's not the fact that a true Christian, a true follower of Christ, a true believer that somebody that's going to believe the word of God. No, they're not judging you. They're just they they're telling you, they're trying to share with you the word of God. Yes, the Bible speaks against homosexuality. The Bible speaks against fornication. It speaks against um adultery. It speaks against killing. It speaks against all of that. But to God, sin is sin. No sin is greater than the other. Sin is sin. And it's the fact that, yes, 
as a people, as leaders, we pinpoint out things that the body of Christ is doing, things that the world is doing. Yes, we have to speak against it. But it's not judging you. Now, yes, judging is when you take a homosexual person or you take somebody that's cheating on their wife or you take a murderer or you take the whore and you you single them out and, and you don't show them love or you won't give them a job. Yes, that's judging. But when you go to that person and you share with them what thus said the Lord, what's in the Bible, and you tell them, brother or sister, you know what you're doing is wrong. This you do you know in God's eye this is wrong. And you show them the scriptures. There are many scriptures in the Bible that speaks against all, just about every sin there is. It's about every sin that you commit, somebody in that Bible has done it. Therefore, it's not necessarily judging. It's not judging at all. It's just when you know better, you do better. And, and as a as a believer and a follower of Christ and as a leader, if you do not share with your brother or sister the word of God, then yes, God is going to hold you accountable. So leaders, you have to stop sugarcoating. You have to stop worrying about who going to leave your church, who going to talk about you, or who going to take you to court. Okay, if, if you get sent to jail for spreading the word of God, good. God is going to reward you great because you you are in a sense, if you do not spread the un, un, um, the uncoded truth, the uncoded word, the, without any sugar, spices, and stuff on top of it, yes, God is going to reward you. But you, you're so afraid of the people. And, and the Bible speaks in, in, uh, leading up to the tribulation and in the tribulation period that... You will be tested. People are going to test you. People are going to even ask you, are, are you saved? Are you for Christ? And, and, and they're going to persecute you. If you are a leader, you're going to have to endure persecution every day of your life. When God has called you to lead his people and draw his people to him, you're going to endure persecution. So if you, if, if, even if you go to jail, if you get to the court, if your name gets slashed around, if they throw you out, if they throw you out your own church, oh well, you did what God told you to do. Because you know better. And when you sit here worried about taking this or, or, or this, this, that, you, you're, you're falling into what the people want, not what God wants. The people want you to be quiet. You, you want, you're, the people want you to tell them what they want to hear. And you cannot do that. I don't care if you come to church this Sunday and everybody, there's not one person in your, in your church. Oh, well, you know that you done done something because you done stepped on some toes. And people, stop ridiculing these preachers because they are telling the truth. That's what they're for. That's what they're there for. God has put them there to lead you and to correct you and to speak to you in such a way that conviction falls on you. But would you take conviction and you take it as a threat, you take it as judgment, you take it as they're, they're trying to single you out when, when some preachers, yes. But I'll get on that in a minute. But those who are really trying to help you, they're not trying to single you out and judge you. They're trying to help you because evidently you still don't know what the word of God truly means. And I get so sick and tired of, of people saying, God knows my heart. Yeah, God knows your heart. He knows your heart is full of, 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 of confusion. It's full of trickery. That, that line saying, God knows my heart. Yeah, he knows your heart, all right? And you still going to bust hell wide open. If you, God knows your heart, if you sit and say out your own mouth, yeah, I know what I'm doing is wrong, but God knows my heart. You, 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 you making an ass out of God. Yeah, I said it. You making a, you making a complete ass out of yourself and God. You're mocking God by saying, you, this by saying he know your heart. If he know your heart so well and you know your heart, then why don't you do what he say and stop trying to use God knows my heart as a crutch because that's all it is. It's an excuse and it's a crutch and God is not pleased with that and you're still going to bust hell wide open if you don't stop what you're doing because the God, sin is sin. And he said, he teaches us in his word to flee from sin. You don't want to be one of those ones 
then when judgment day comes and you stand up and say, well, Lord, I, you know my heart. You knew I, I love you. You know, but I struggled with I, I this, I that, or I, I helped this person, or, oh, this person came to Christ through me. Uh-oh, he's still going to sit up there and tell you, depart from me because I knew you not. Why? Because you didn't live your life the way he told you to. And a lot of people, they, 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 they talk about prophecy. People say there's no prophecy in this time. All the prophets was back from the biblical times. No, that's a lie because the Bible even states that in the last, leading up to the last days, that your sons and your daughters will prophesy. And that, that, that script, that verse in itself means, yes, from that baby on up to that woman. From that, yeah, that child to that young boy to that woman. And so many people say, well, why? Paul said the woman's place is, yeah, he said that. But, this, but as time has gone on, the men that God has called to spread the word of God, y'all are not doing what God has told you to do. So who he got to go to? He got to use the woman, okay? Then the women. We're not doing what God told us. We're not spreading the word. We're, we're running from what he told us to do. So who are you going to go to? That child, just like the scripture says. He's going to use, he's, in the last day, your, your sons and daughters will prophesy. Why? Because that child is the purest thing that he can get to. That child is untouched. That child is without sin until that child gets to an age. And even then, and, and even then when they still, that child still lives his or her life a, a, trying to serve God. You take a child that's never had sex. They go on up and try to, they're pure. In, in that sense, they're untouched. Therefore, God can reach them. But the deeper you go in sin as going up until after, the further you step away from Christ. So therefore, we're, our ears are stopped up. We got blindfolders over our eyes or we got some shades on because we have got so deep in, in sin that we can't hear from God, we can't see him. So therefore, he uses the child because that child can hear and see. That child is still a young spirit from God. And those that are walking in a prophetic anointing, those that are walking in an apostleship, yes, God has called, called those because Paul clearly stated this is how the church should be set up. If you're going to have a ministry, yes. You can't do ministry by yourself. You have to have help. You got to have. If you're a pastor, yes. You got to have a teacher there with you. You got to have an evangelist there with you. And if God has sent someone to your ministry that has that has been called to be an apostle, you're going to have to let them teach you. Because an apostle is a more higher mandate than a pastor. That mean that apostles are to build ministries. They are they are they're there to help you build your ministry. They're there to correct you. They're there to tell you what you are doing wrong. And you have to advert if you have to administer that change. Then there's the prophet. You have the prophet within your ministry. You that prophet might see something that you don't see, and, and you have to listen to them. You can't just have be big headed and say. I'm the pastor, nothing, blah, 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 nothing, excuse me, that I don't want to hear that nobody else got to say. You, you can't do that. So, therefore, it says in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 20, despise not prophesy, despise not prophesize, prophesying. And then in John 4, 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 5, it says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. But this you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses Jesus Christ has come to the flesh is, is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. If you are a true follower of Christ, if you are a true man or woman of God, you will know who you have within your congregation. You will know who has been called to be an apostle. You will know who's been called to be an evangelist. You will know 
who's there within your ministry to help you. And you have to acknowledge it. And just because you might not see something does not mean that the member sitting on the back row doesn't see something because you have you just have to listen. You have to listen in the spirit. You have to see in the spirit. And you people, even pe another thing, people, you have to quit saying that everybody is a false prophet. Yes, the scripture says, beware of false prophets. But if your discernment of the spirit is right, you will know who is real and who is fake by their teachings. And, and, and people, stop always looking for the prophet or the apostle to give you a good word because every prophet has not, the, most, a lot of prophets are not the bearer of good news. They never have good news. The, some prophets are only here to, uh, to tell you, to warn you of end times, to warn you of things to come, to warn you about something you're doing in your own life, to warn you. That's, that's the job, that's, that's the sole job of some prophets. Now, some prophets, yes. If God gives it to them to speak a good word to you, to, to, to tell you something good is going to happen to you, yes. Use your discernment. If your spirit agrees with it and you know that this is a true man, then, then accept it and wait on God to manifest it in your life. And one other thing that I was going to touch on, praise and worship is taught in both Old and New Testament. And going back to the denomination. You, you, all you're doing is coming there doing routine. Raising money, might as well say, because some of the denominations, all you're worried about is money. Yes, it takes finances to keep a building up and running. This day and age, you got bills, you got light, water, gas, mortgage, rent, whatever. Yes, it takes money to, to, to grow a building. I'm not even going to say to grow ministry. To, if you want to have your ministry within the building and you're not out on hand and on, on foot and by car or traveling, yes, it, just, it, still, takes, it still, still takes money to do that. But you cannot put a leash on praise and worship. You have to sing. The Bible says praise him with song and dance. It was shouting with the loud cymbals, the organ, the harp, whatever, the string instruments. It clearly states that and it goes back and reiterates it in the New Testament. So you can't say that that's an Old Testament thing because it's in the Old and New Testament. The New Testament just reiterates what the Old Testament says. You cannot go into the house of God, the building, the temple, and, and sit there like lumps on the law. You can't just sit there and, 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 and hear the, what the man of God is saying, but there's no praise and there's no worship. You cannot do that. So, therefore, you have to give God the praise. You have to worship him. You have to praise him in whatever way you're going to praise him. You want to jump, shout, sing, play an instrument, yell, run, dance, whatever. Worship you, you have to come at yourself to worship God. You have to lift your hands up, bow down, speak in tongues, whatever God has given you to worship him with, then use it. But then going back to the main point, these denominations, the body of Christ, people, you have got to search the scripture for yourself because these denominations, half of them is going to bust hell wide open if they don't change. Yes, I said it. It's too many different rules. It's too many this, don't do this. It's too much of that. And it's a distraction to the point that God is not even a reason why you're even there. I, I witnessed somebody ask, ask the congregation one time, what, what's the most important thing? And the, and the answer was the budget. Money. Really? That's what your ministry is about is the budget trying to send money to somebody else or trying to give that. No. Get it together, people. I know I was doing a little rambling and jumping around, but my thing is, people, you have to study to show yourself approved. If, if your spirit don't agree with something or something's confusing, if you, I don't care if you've been in the church for 20 years, and if their teaching is not what that word of God is saying, then they are teaching false doctrines. But I'm going to end this right now. 
May you all be blessed and you have a good rest of the day.